we were, during our Contessa case actually, the mayor had contacted me and uh, asked that um, we sit with him to hear his vision. Um, and we sat with him three times, actually. Um, we got to share some information and um, he shared a lot. And um, on the third or fourth time, it came out in the newspaper that, um, that his park on Mauna Kea that he's proposing would include the TMT. You know, and just, just for the record, he definitely understands that he has no jurisdiction. The county does, is, Mauna Kea is quote unquote ceded lands. Um, so, you know, we're the right holders, Native Hawaiian and the public are the right holders. The county doesn't actually have jurisdiction over Mauna Kea. But anyways, you know, sharing ideas with him, hearing what he had to say, um, all sounded real good up until the point where he showed up in the newspaper and had announced that all of this would include the TMT. Well, you know, the problem with that is he didn't tell us that it would include the TMT. Um, and so, you know, we went back and asked him, you know, Mayor, how come you didn't include this information when you were meeting with us and um, you know basically he he said to us of course it will include the TMT and um, I'm paraphrasing but there were many witnesses who could testify to this he actually said this that it, it will include the TMT and you will accept the TMT and then you will teach everyone about peace and aloha and at that point, we had to say, well, the first part of Ho'oponopono, I mean, people use that word all over the place, but the first part of Ho'oponopono that Ho'oponopono is, port, is so important is that you have to stop the injury. So that's what we said to him, you know, of course we cannot support something that is injuring that is injuring us, that is considered desecration by us. And, um, you know, we're not a trivial group of people. There's a lot of people. In fact, we said to him, we just hand delivered 67,000 signatures um, to the governor to, that were affirming, one, stop the desecration, two, stop the arrest of the Kia'i. So, um, you know, this idea that um, he should make a park, that's another offensive aspect, is that Mauna Kea is not a park. Mauna Kea is a temple, it's a house of worship, it is a burial ground. We, did, we, we were offended by the idea that he should just want to try to secularize it and make it a place for recreation, because that's what happens to sacred places is once they become a national park or or uh, a park of any kind it becomes a recreational place not a place of reverence and a place where deep and most important ceremony uh, is done i mean this was the people that came and sat with him were people from the contessa case hearing all of the kiai um, and all of the hui and we sat and we listened and we gave him much respect as a kupuna and an elder that we do respect but this proposal is is very offensive and we have told him months ago like during the contessa case hearing that we cannot support it so the the idea that he's spoken to people and no one's disagreed with him that would not be true because um some of the you know, major Kia'i fighting for the protection of Mauna Kea have disagreed and um, told him so in a, in a very fair and respectful way.
what I what I think is important for people to know is we are very disappointed in what the Supreme Court did, but we were very encouraged by what Justice Wilson and, and to some extent Justice Pollack actually stood up for. Um, we also, and if you haven't seen, please try to review the um, amicus, uh, the friend of the court that was filed by many of the professors from Richardson School of Law who were basically explaining that this decision was taking us back 30 years um, instead of bringing us forward and following actual precedent. But what I think is important to the Kia'i and the people out there now, and including the mayor and the governor and everybody else, is that, you know, the court in many ways didn't rule on questions of law and our individual questions that we had put forth to the court. We were, there were many questions, not only what were contained in our legal briefs, but those that were contained in the case itself, where the court, the Supreme Court, could actually look at anew, because when uh, a board decision is a bad decision, they can also look at it brand new, de novo, it's called. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, we had all of those particular cases. So there's a bunch of issues that are still outstanding that we will likely litigate on if need be. Um, some things that we want to talk about, for example, the AG is not enforcing desecration. The desecration law, which is Hawaii Revised Statutes 1107-711, basically outlines the act of desecration, what it looks like, and what is construed as desecration and what isn't. So Mauna Kea fits every one of the criteria. It's a sacred place. It's a place of veneration, a burial site, all of those things. It also, the act of desecration would outrage a, a, a large seg segment of the population. That's the other criteria. So that is still an open situation. Um, they ruled a little bit on it, but there's other ways to bring it up. Also, the, the rules require uh, a project uh, built, being built on Mauna Kea to have a, a bond. And, that, and that's a simple rule so that the people of Hawaii are not saddled with a project that for some catastrophic reason cannot be finished, like the rail, uh, how Super Ferry was done, um, where they spent all kinds of taxpayer money and then the court ruled again. Yeah. So this bond is important, but it, it, for the TMT, they already have a 400 million shortfall. The bond would be 1.4 billion. So that's a lot more money that they're still needing to even make the project move forward. These things still need the bond still need the 400 million what is also still needed is the extended lease um, because TMT is not going to build if they only have because the end of the lease is 2033 so they want an extended lease for another 65 years so that has not been accomplished um, and plus they have to meet all the conditions that are in the actual permit so those things mean that they're probably not going to start tomorrow and also Mauna Kea has been a sacred place for millennia before America even was in existence so you know what we're really looking at is an inherent uh, divide of the, the modern oppressing the ancient but what we're really needing is the modern and the ancient to come together to, to be the best of both worlds. And I mean, we really mean that seriously, that we can't keep looking out in space if we're unwilling to take care of this place. That's uh, Craig Neff's shirt, you know. So, yeah, <laughs> we love his shirt, uh, Hawaiian Force. Um, but no, truthfully, you know, looking out there, it's not to say that that's not a noble, noble endeavor. And we've said this a million times. We're not against astronomy, but we're for, for Mauna Kea and we're for Hawaii and the planet Earth. And we're in this huge crisis 
and we you know looking out there well yeah no modern relevancy and i know they encourage probably going to get on my case and say what do you mean there's no modern relevancy what i mean is that when we're looking out in space we're looking back in time and we may be looking back in time hundreds of millions of years so the light has taken that long just to reach our eye but that thing that we were looking at where the light is only now reaching our eye may not exist any longer so what i'm trying to say is there's nothing immediately that we're going to lose if we don't see that we wanted them to be very clear that they're going to participate in a project and the state will use their project to act aggressively against the hawaiian people because for 126 years we have given them no excuse to act aggressively and we still don't the whole time on mauna kea in 2015 there was no violence so there's not going to be any violence. We will be peaceful again, you know, and I know that Kia'i all across the archipelago are preparing themselves. As Pua has said, you know, Pua Kei, she ahead to people, prepare yourself. And I would say the same. You need to prepare yourself to, to know what you want to do and why we need to be Kapu Aloha. Um, because that is our protection and that is our way and we cannot allow the outside influence to change the way we live here in Hawaii and I would say the same to the mayor and the governor as well and the attorney general because we intend to be peaceful and if you intend to act on that then the world will see the truth